Hey friends, it's Betsy from the blog of flourishingplace.com and in today's video we are talking all about how to declutter bookshelves. If you're interested, I have a full blog post linked up in the description box below for this video. And also, I have my free five simple steps for how to declutter any space in your home. And that is a little free ebook and it's linked up also in the description box below. So like I said, my name is Betsy. I have a wonderful husband and two small children and we love to read in our house. My husband is a reader, I love to read, and we love to read to our kids. And so when it comes to keeping bookshelves tidy and having decluttered bookshelves, and honestly how to declutter bookshelves when we're looking at the books that we own, it can be really hard because we love books and so we don't necessarily part with them easily. However, our bookshelves have gotten a little out of hand lately. We have a bookcase in our office and it is just, oh man, it's bad. So we've got tons of books that are in there and then I started stacking books on top and then there's books that are lying sideways on top of other books. This is not a pretty bookcase and honestly, the books just aren't easily accessible. You know, it's hard to pull something out without worrying that something else is gonna fall down or slide off and that just doesn't make for a good situation. I decided that I needed to go ahead and start decluttering bookshelves. Now, I've mentioned before in the past, decluttering is something that I enjoy doing or I should say I enjoy the final product probably like most people it's not always an easy thing to do but with regard to the bookshelves I had been procrastinating and the reason why is because we love to read and I thought I just don't know if I can get in there and make decisions and really be able to do a good job of decluttering or I just end up spending an hour staring at the bookcase you know I get rid of one book and then I'm like oh, I that's it, I don't know what else to do. And so I had been procrastinating for a while, but I finally decided it was out of hand. I needed to just get with it and get things decluttered. So when looking at how to declutter bookshelves, the most important thing you can look at first is what is your goal? So some people are not big readers. And so for some people, the goal is uh, more decor. They like the idea of how books look or a certain color scheme or whatever. And so it's important to evaluate, are you hanging on to books because you're a big reader? Are you hanging on to books because you just uh, kind of like to access them every once in a while and read a book every once in a blue moon? Or are you the kind of person that likes to use them mainly for decor and that's kind of your end goal? I of course care about them looking nice and the aesthetics of, of it all are important to me. But even more than that, the important piece was making our books accessible and making them look neat and tidy and inviting, if you know what I mean, and not look like a place where we had just stashed a bunch of junk and there were just books crammed everywhere and it wasn't really usable. So that was the big thing for me, making our books accessible and then making it look tidy and making it look nice. If you are someone that is more interested in using books for decor, there's some wonderful ideas out there. You can see, you know, different people. I know my sister-in-law has a gorgeous book case that she has arranged by color of the spine of the book. So, you know, all the reds are together, the blues are together, the greens, you know, and it's kind of this lovely rainbow of color on their bookcase. And that is awesome. I also see some people where they'll arrange their books and they'll actually turn the, the spine to the back. And so it's the pages that face out. And so you have this lovely kind of neutral palette of book pages um, rather than facing the spines out. And that has a lovely look for decor as well. So if that is your goal, there's lots of ideas on Pinterest, lots of fun pictures to look at for how you can arrange books for decor. In this video, I'm talking mostly to people that love to read and people that want to keep their books around and the books don't all have to match, you know, the colors don't all have to go together, but they're just trying to figure out a way of how to declutter bookshelves and keep things accessible and visible and still looking tidy and nice. So first step is to declutter. Boy, this is really so hard as I'm going through books. You kind of look at the whole shelf and you're like, oh, I can knock this out easily. And you know, I can just declutter it and it'll take about half an hour and that's just, not the case when you actually get into it, right? There are some of these books 
that I am just having so much trouble deciding whether or not to keep them and trying to go by my own principles of how to make decisions quickly for decluttering, but it's tough. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Don't start trying to reorganize or rearrange books. This is what I always say before you organize. It always makes sense to declutter first because you don't want to be shuffling things around and organizing things that you're going to end up tossing later. It just doesn't make sense, but I have done it before. So that's why I say that out loud. So if you're looking at decluttering your bookshelves, first thing you want to look at is what books do you want to keep for reference? This is a big one for me. I have a lot of books that I have read um, and some books I read and then I just get rid of. I don't feel the need to read them again. A lot of the books that I end up hanging on to are books that I use for reference. I know I'm going to go back to them again and again, or there's certain books that are so good that I know it's just a book I want to reread every two, three, five years. You know, I just kind of want to go back and read it again. And so those I think are books that are worth hanging on to. You'll hear some people say, oh, if it's a book that you can easily access, you know, get rid of it because you can just check it out from the library or you can find it at a used bookstore for cheap and it's not that big of a deal. And there is definitely a point to be made there, but I would say for me, if it's a book that I really love or really feel like I want to go back to again and again, I like to have it on hand. And that is just personal preference. And I should also say that's coming from someone who is a huge fan of the library. The majority of the books that I read are actually not books that are sitting on my shelf at home. Those are books that I have kept. And like I said, I go back to for reference or they're really good books that I want to reread again. But the majority of new books that I read, I check out from the library. The library is awesome. You can check out obviously hard copy, you know, paper books from the library. And then the Libby app is awesome. And you can check out ebooks and you can check out audiobooks. And that is really almost every time that is where I go first. If I've not read a book and I'm not sure whether I'm going to like it or not, whether or not it's worth owning, I go to the library first and I check it out and I read it for free. And then I decide if that's something that I actually want to purchase. So when determining what to keep and what to get rid of, that is what I would say. Keep books that you will use for reference. Keep books that you just love and you think are just well worth kind of rereading and kind of refreshing yourself on at a later time as something that really sticks with you and you want to remember the principles in it. Or classics, honestly, classic novels or you know, books by great thinkers, philosophers, whatever, you might think, well, these are fairly accessible. I don't know that I need to keep these. I mean, they're classics, right? So classics are fairly easy to find. But I would say, I don't know, again, this is personal preference, but for us, the classic books that we have, and we have a couple of sets of classic books, and then we also just have individual classics that we have bought, um, my husband and I, and we have decided to keep those on hand. We love having them accessible as our kids get older. We want those to be accessible and available to them and ready to just grab off the shelf. And so that's a decision we have made. But again, that's not something you have to do if you feel like you would rather have the space and get rid of those classic books because they're fairly easy to find from the library or elsewhere. There's nothing wrong with that. Decluttering bookshelves can be overwhelming. That is the truth. But if you use the principle, and I talked about this in a former video and it's so important, use the principle of pulling out what you love first. Don't start going through books and going, oh, do I want to keep this one? Do I not? And then you pick up the next one. Do I want to keep this one? Do I not? Start instead by pulling the books off the shelf that you love, that you know you want to keep, you know you don't want to get rid of. And that's really going to help you to kind of build that core set of books that you know you want to keep. And then from there, you're making decisions with the other books that you have left over. Okay, so in talking about how to declutter bookshelves, this is the biggest key that will help you as you go to reorganize the books that you have left. It will help you to have bookshelves that look neat and organized and tidy, not just like you have a bunch of books jumbled on a bookcase and it looks really cluttered. That is one of the hard things about bookcases is because unless you have books where, you know, it's like an Ikea display where all the spines of the books are the same color and it all just looks perfectly uniform, which none of us have that, right? Because we're real people living in real houses with real books. Everything looks different. So there is one key that I have found to when you go to reorganize your books, making the shelves look nice and organized and beautiful. It's not matching spines. It's not making sure everything looks uniform. It is leaving open space on your bookshelves. 
It is giving your books room to breathe. So if you're like me, I have the tendency to pack our bookshelves tight with books and you just think, oh, there's more space and you just keep putting on more and more books. And the key to having a bookshelf that looks uncluttered and tidy and inviting is to leave open space on your bookshelves. So you have kind of groupings of books on the shelves and then just add little pieces of decor in there whether it's a framed picture or you know a decorative bookend or something and you don't even have to you can leave that space just completely open if you want but that is something I have found if you give your books space to breathe and you leave open spaces on the bookshelves regardless of what your books are or how they look or how the spines don't match or whatever it's going to look really nice because it's not going to look crammed and overstuffed and full and crowded. It's going to look open and airy and like your books just have space to kind of be and like you can easily go and just grab a book right off the shelf and start reading. I did this also on our bookshelves out in the living room. So we have a very tall narrow bookcase out in the living room and I obviously in going through the bookcase back in the office it became obvious that not only did we have books that we needed to declutter, which we definitely did, but we also just honestly had too many books for that bookcase. Once I had gone through and decluttered everything that we wanted to get rid of, there were still too many books for that bookcase. And so what I did instead was I have a couple of sets of books that were out on the big narrow bookcase out in the living room. So I put those away for a while. We love those and we enjoy them, but I really wanted to make this living room bookcase. I wanted to make it more than a decorative bookcase. And, and honestly, that's pretty much what it had been. So I decided to put those books away for a while. And you may ask why I didn't get rid of them. Uh, I do love those book sets. I do reference them um, every once in a while. And they were also a very special gift from my grandfather who's now passed on. And so there's some family sentimental value there as well. So those are put away for now. And I brought books out from our bookcase in the office and kind of styled this bookcase out in the living room. And this was great. None of these books, I have sets of books, obviously. You can see I have, you know, Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings and different things like that that are sets of books that look similar. But then there are a lot of books on the bookcase that are not part of a set and they look very different from one another. But even so, just the simple concept of grouping books together in small groups and leaving open space on the bookshelf, I was amazed at how nice this looked in the end. Um, just by using that concept and like I said everything doesn't have to match perfectly or be the same color or look perfectly uniform and it still looks tidy and inviting and so that worked out really well and that's really the concept that I tried to carry through into the office with the books that we had left in there after decluttering was leaving open space on the bookshelves in different little spots and then kind of arranging things in that way. So this is an important thing. For me, I love the aesthetics of things. I wouldn't mind arranging books by color of spine, you know, like putting all the red books together, putting all the blue books together, you know, I, I think that looks kind of cool. But my husband and I both weigh in on this, right? Because we're both accessing the books. And for him, it's really important that books are arranged somewhat by topic and kind of by theme and so you know kind of oh here's you know biographies over here or I know we have books about history over here or different things like that because he wants to be able to access them quickly and know exactly what is where and honestly I agree with him the bigger our book collection has gotten and the more books we have come to own over the years it does become a lot easier to organize them by topic rather than just organizing them to be pleasing to the eye. So those are our bookcases, the bookcase in the living room and the bookcase in the office. You can see how that turned out here. I am pleased with how it turned out. Bookcases are just something that honestly, like a lot of other parts of the house, you just kind of need to keep up with it and kind of a little bit at a time just go through and declutter books. It doesn't have to be a big, huge project. Like I said, this is something that I procrastinated on for a long time because I was worried that I just wouldn't be able to make any decisions. But once I got into decluttering and really looking at what I wanted to keep for reference, 
what I wanted to keep because it was a classic and what I wanted to keep because it was just a really solid book that I like to reread every few years. It made it easy to weed out the ones that we really didn't need anymore. Another big plug for the library, like I said, I'm a huge library fan. If I bought every book that uh, I checked out from the library, our house would be crammed from floor to ceiling because I am just a library addict. But I would really encourage you, if you haven't gotten into using the library, that will really end up saving space in your home because you're checking out books from the library and then returning them rather than buying every book that looks interesting to you and keeping it on hand. So check out your local library, check out the Libby app, L-I-B-B-Y, the Libby app, and you will be really stoked at what you can find and things that you can just have on your phone or on your Kindle and you don't have to bring a hard copy into the house and take up space, which is always a plus. I hope this video has been helpful for you. I hope it's been encouraging. Bookshelves can be hard, especially if you are a big reader, but it's so rewarding to go through and then arrange everything and organize it nicely so that your books are visible and accessible. And like I said, so that your bookcases are inviting for everyone in the family. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I make videos on this channel all about decluttering, organizing, and creating beauty in your home on a budget. And I will see you next time. Bye.